Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. My name is Reem Maghribi. I am the managing director of Shark, which is a non-profit community interest company that is interested in culture and communication, along with my colleague Alexandra Sandals and with the um, support of the Swedish Institute, we are offering a series of debates on the um, uh, on a series of debates um, about Syrian culture in times of conflict. Today, uh, we are holding our 12th debate, which is uh, related to women's empowerment, and we would like in our discussion to focus mainly about how permanent is empowerment is, what are the gains that are achieved by Syrian women during uh, the past couple of years? Are they permanent? Are uh, they temporary? Will we be losing such gains uh, when security and peace um, are set in? So I believe that maybe we should express ourselves. And everybody knows that Syrian women, um, Syrian men and children know that uh, gains have been little during the past four years. However, today we would like to um, um, not necessarily highlight the gains because they are obvious, but we would like to discuss such highlights in order to uh, shed the light on this seed that we wish to grow in terms of women's empowerment. So this is one of the main reasons behind our debate today. I would like uh, to welcome uh, four ladies who are uh, seated with me. Allow me to introduce you to them and who will be sharing with us uh, their experiences. Women's empowerment, uh, what do they think about the future of uh, Syrian women? What are the experiences? What are the um, experiences they have uh, gone through during the past couple of years. Uh, first of all, we have Mrs. Amira Malik, who is the managing director of uh, the uh, Syrian um, hub for uh, Syrian women making peace. Sitting next to her is Mrs. Rahaf Haboub, who is um, uh, a media officer, and she is as well um, uh, giving uh, programs on uh, the channel of Syria FM. Sitting next to her is Mrs. Mirfa Al Ali from uh, Reef of Aleppo, who is uh, currently residing in Shatila, and Mrs. Mirvat Abour from Reef Al Ghouta, who is currently as well living in Shatila camp in Beirut. Mirvat um, and uh, Murphy are from uh, the beneficiaries of um, the Basme and Zaytuni small grants program. I shall start with Amira. My question is the following. Women's empowerment, to what extent is it important and how does it affect society in general? I shall not start with the idea that um, women are important because if women were not important, we wouldn't have been here and we wouldn't have been working. Women per se are very important. They are persons that, that we need to empower similarly to children and men. However, women are more important because uh, they can affect women and children. We cannot um, separate. We cannot separate women from their husbands and children. I should be very realistic. I can give you examples from the Syrian experience during the past um, uh, four years. I can give you the example of Dhammi, which is a civil society organization, which is actually a group of women from Al Zabadani, which is a city located in the Reef of Damascus. Um, it has been under embargo for uh, some time, and it is uh, classified as one of the hot spots uh, ever since um, the conflict um, started. Uh, those women uh, during the embargo reach a point where their children were uh, in such fear and anxiety that they needed uh, psychological support um, and they were cut off uh, from school. They um, contacted us um, uh, at Juzur and Muntada Suriya uh, Yasnana as Salam in order to support uh, or in order to start a psychological center for uh, children and to have a KG that teaches English. We um, met with them. They managed to leave as Zabadani in a way that is very difficult. Even their husbands um, are categorized among uh, the armed um, resistance, and they even had fears because they thought that if they would leave, um, they would put pressure on their men in order to surrender. Today, those women who started as a very small group are capable today of releasing women from prisons. How? 
when they first started uh, the institute, they contacted um, uh, the barracks and the checkpoints um, uh, and uh, with the free army in order to make sure that the center is not bombed. One of the ladies uh, tells us uh, that while she was um, taking uh, chairs and accessories uh, to, uh, to the center, this uh, the building um, had uh, actually a flag put on it in order not to be bombed. Here, I'm not uh, supporting neither the regime nor the free army. Of course, um, uh, every uh, person had interest in showing that uh, children were being educated. Um, um, of course, the Syrian regime wanted to show that uh, things were back uh, to normal, and uh, um, the uh, free army wanted as well to show that um, uh, those are their children. And today, they are working on reconciliation. Today, women in Azerbaijan which is called uh, the Dhammi group uh, is uh, working on uh, negotiating um, um, negotiating agreements on releasing women from prisons and I am confident I am sharing with you information that I am confident of this is where women empowerment started this is where I believe um, is uh, the positive element of the past uh, three years because before the war these women were nothing they were simply upbringing their children and they were devoting their time to uh, their homes uh, because uh, they live in a close community. And their only road is only to um, uh, cater to the needs of their, um, of their husbands. Um, some of the husbands were, of course, arrested um, and because they felt that they had to play a role. And because we worked on empowering such women, we trained them, we provided them with psychological support, we gave them uh, some uh, female uh, support. And today, those women are capable of playing a very important role. And this is the example I wanted to share with you. Thank you, Sazrim. This is an excellent example. Now, Morfe, you, we have heard of women in Zabadani, how um, an organization helped them uh, to be better empowered and develop their capacities. You have been in Beirut for the past year and a half. By means of Basma Zaytuna, you were capable of opening a small business. Maybe you could share with us about um, how your um, capacities developed and how this influenced your family life and your personal psychology. We have been displaced. I uh, came to Lebanon. I uh, lived uh, in Shatila. We conducted uh, Basma and Zaytuna when I first enrolled um, the children at school. I was very happy with um, uh, the way things have evolved. Um, then some grants were given, some very small grants were given. I had uh, to support my family, I had to um, help uh, my uh, kids, um, and we started taking part uh, in the seminar. Then they developed my capacities. I opened um, um, a very small uh, shop facing uh, Basma and Zaytuna uh, in Shatila camp. I started working, I started being productive uh, to feel that I wanted to work. Uh, they developed my capacities, they assisted me, they helped me, I uh, did some business. I felt that I wanted to help my children because I live in a country where I have to resist. In Aleppo, you used um, to stay at home. How did your husband adapt to the change? When I first came to Lebanon, I, um, of course, in the past, I only used to uh, stay at home. Um, uh, we went uh, to Basma and Zaytuna. The first time I went there, it was only for school. After that, um, I was capable of developing my competencies. Um, um, I uh, started um, to... <laughs> This is Murfa that once uh, you are back to Syria, you can continue working similarly as uh, you are doing here.
So far, I am still having a very close business that is limited to women. And I'm only working with the persons that I have been trained. And I do not think that this will be embraced or accepted. So when you go back home, you um, believe that you will surrender and that your life will be back to what it used to be. No, this is something, this is an initiative that I must take. I must resist as far as, as, much, as much as possible. I need to develop this. Um, and I need, of course, to convey the message before I come back, if I come back. If women are empowered inside or outside um, uh, Syria, now, I think that uh, there might be a conflict between men and women when time is for stability after war. Do you believe that this uh, will happen? Yes. Do you think that it will happen? Do you think that it should happen? Yes. Rahaf, what do you think? Uh, you are a journalist. Uh, you have uh, a radio program that is called Hadith Ashara, the talk of the town. How did the, the approach to women change during the past four years? Um, do you think uh, that they are um, willing to embrace a new role for women on the long run? Honestly, I do not think this will be very easy. Women are attempting today to understand their real value now that um, uh, uh, men are no longer present as uh, they used to be because uh, men are recruited as soldiers. And, and um, uh, since uh, the male resources are depleted, this means that uh, Syria is now relying more on men, uh, on women, which means that women are supposed to and are obliged to empower themselves. It's no longer dependent on them. It's not only a matter of peace and uh, security or stability. It's not only about uh, having women uh, take uh, a step back. And the uh, society will not accept that a step back is taken. They have uh, to take into account the current situation. So if there is anything or any positive outcome of this hideous war is that it has changed um, uh, the general approach to women. What about the media? Does the media play a role in supporting women in the future? Yes, of course. By means um, of the radio or of the internet, we can introduce um, a very small change. When we had the 1325 um, initiative on uh, protection, uh, prevention, and participation in uh, politics after peace, um, the topic was a bit um, strange to Syrian women because they had never um, heard of uh, 1325. They had never were uh, understood or heard of any uh, matters that are related to us in our um, uh, civil matters or civil affairs law. We Assyrians, uh, we never understood this. We never heard about it. Can we change this? Of course we can change. Even when we had discussed um, how civil activities uh, can start a lobbying group in order to change the situation. This is something very important, and uh, some uh, Syrian women are sometimes um, astonished at uh, their capacity to change. Um, the media can play a role, of course, um, no matter how little it could be. Amira, do you agree that um, those gains um, can become permanent? For example, I do not like comparisons in general, but if you look at Libya and if we see that women were a very active um, component of society uh, in the media, and in politics, uh, even during the revolution, during the one-year war. But of course, as a result of the lack of stability, but as well as a result of um, the uh, civil perspective or uh, the um, society's rejection of women's uh, status, we can see that women have uh, no position to play, no role in politics or in the media, and whoever um, even dares to speak is killed. So how can we, in Syria, avoid such a situation? First, we have to change. Change is not an easy matter. I'm not saying that I want to remove something from this side to that side. I'm changing um, a whole concept, a whole uh, social perspective. Um, I have to work on education with uh, the younger generation. If I am to do all this without any strategy or planning, uh, I will fail. I cannot uh, assess uh, the Libyan situation because uh, it's um, uh, not a matter of mine, but I think that they were doing something good and positive at one stage, and if this uh, good had uh, ended, it's because it was not well um, established or because it was not well studied, not because it was wrong. 
and I cannot condemn any other female initiative. Maybe the initiative in Syria failed because uh, it lacked a strategy, it uh, was not on the long run, it uh, uh, failed to reconciliate between people. So, as Syrians, we are capable of having such coordination and strategy at one time. Here, I did not come to Lebanon to work with people that I have known for a long period of time. I had, I barely know them. I only met with them yesterday and I am working with them. I'm working with your organization, with Basman Zaytouni, with the third organization. T today we are gathered because we have one strategy, which means that if we can fulfill and continue our perspectives, we can um, strengthen and we can, um, we can of course, um, in, uh, have those uh, gains become permanent. Uh, this, of course, um, achievement will not be imposed to us from abroad or from outside. It has to be our own activity. Amira spoke about um, cooperation among women and uh, the collective non-individual activity. Uh, you have been living in the reef of uh, Syria uh, and rural areas and you didn't have the opportunity of meeting women outside uh, the uh, village or the, uh, the villages or the cities where you were um, confined. Uh, today, um, when you have left Syria, you have met um, with uh, Lebanese, Syrian and Palestinian women that you wouldn't have had the opportunity to meet before. This opportunity, those debates uh, that you hold together, how did they change your perspectives or your ambitions or um, horizons? I think that I have changed for the best. Now I had uh, the pleasure to meet you, to meet the ladies, and this is of course a change for the best. But how can this help you on a personal level? Any woman, as Amira said, we must um, empower ourselves and maintain those gains. We have managed to accomplish something that is very important and something that we must not lose. We have to be keen on maintaining such um, undertakings. It's as if the war happened in order to be capable of overcoming obstacles uh, to meeting with other women, uh, to be uh, given a grant, what about you, Mervet? How do you think that this has affected you personally in terms of your morals? Yes, likewise. This has helped me a lot. For a year and a half, I remained isolated um, and introvert. And here in Lebanon, I remained introvert for a year and, and a half, staying with my kids at home. However, when I had uh, the chance of uh, receiving the grant, um, I shared uh, th this accomplishment uh, with many Palestinian women and I decided as well to work um, at a center in order to teach uh, women, most of them are Syrians. I felt that this had empowered my culture in all uh, Syrian countries um, and here um, this had introduced me to, Palest to Palestinian and Lebanese cultures. I have evolved in more than one level. When we first came, We managed, of course, uh, to be acquainted with society, Basma and Zaytuna, with the teachers, with the girls. I felt that when I go back home, uh, there is something calling me in order to come back because something was calling me to develop. Because this develops the capacities of women. You feel that you wish to develop some, uh, somehow, and this, of course, improves your um, your morals. Would you feel better if uh, your society and the male's perspective change? Yes, it's possible because uh, this will help us prove ourselves, impose ourselves, and better develop our characteristics, our personality as Syrian women. Amira, don't you think that we have to work on both, not only on, uh, uh, we need not only on uh, educating women, but we need as well to work on a debate with men. Here we are not uh, separating and we must not separate at all stages, even if you are working on um, developed programs, when you are supposed to uh, develop women's perspectives, um, it's not something that is related to her or to empowering her, but it's about empowering men as well. Once again, I repeat, maybe this is my personal opinion, maybe you would disagree with me. 
by the end of the day it's up to us uh, to impose our opinion i do not think um, that anyone could work who works on the long run and who claims his rights will reach a point where he cannot claim such rights but if he will say that this is not my right then he cannot be granted such a right be it from a spouse from another woman from a peer etc we as women we uh, inflict violence against each other and we are um, uh, we are still not sufficiently aware I see that uh, many women are the enemies of other women for uh, reasons uh, pertaining to feminism, to uh, jealousy, for example. But we can say it is my right to work on the long run. And this, of course, could have a positive impact. It comes from within. I have to teach the children the right to say I have the right uh, to be educated, to learn. Um, and we need at the same time to um, teach women about uh, voicing out their right to work. Oh, you cannot wait for an international organization to change a man's um, uh, approach towards women or a woman's uh, stereotype. No, you cannot uh, have um, anyone uh, teach your husband about your right to work. You have to claim your right to work. This is what we had started. But here, of course, you feel that you are mingling with a different society. As she said, we have been capable of uh, making a breakthrough. This breakthrough could develop more and more. May I add something, Green? Yes, of course. You can never take a step forward and then take a step back. A woman that has been granted her right today and has claimed her right to work, even if she goes back to Damascus, will no longer be confined in the vicinity of her house because you can never uh, teach to be and uh, you can never learn to become productive and then take a step back and then accept um, that you are no longer productive no you will be um, insisting more on becoming even more productive there will be something triggering your wish to becoming more productive Yes, but uh, don't you fear that this will lead uh, to some kind of a rip-off within society if uh, women uh, remain resistant, resilient, um, whereas women, uh, whereas men and men do not accept. Uh, now, today, men are accepting because of uh, the need to um, having economic support. Um, when um, stability is restored maybe they could convince women of uh, taking the step back will this of course uh, lead to society a break to a social breakup anyways the situation in syria in general in syria women were uh, were actually uh, unable to uh, ask uh, for more and uh, when uh, the uh, the center is imbalanced um, you have a rapport even if um, you have some gains in this case of course the center is imbalanced the man will no longer be the sole breadwinner and uh, there will not be a clear political or security stability there is more than one factor to um, lacking a, a balance or a center on which she, she could rely there will no longer be one center or one uh, poll on which women can rely. I must not, of course, uh, monopolize the microphone. Maybe we can open the floor for uh, the audience and for debate. Uh, I have to ask you, you are working with Basma and Zaytuna. Maybe and hopefully when you go back to Syria and uh, stability is restored, do you still, uh, are you still open to coordinating on communicating with such female associations? Um, uh, maybe uh, every person will go back home and you will be set apart. Will you be capable of maintaining coordination and cooperation so that you can feel that you can support each others and sustain each others? This was my first question. Second. Uh, for as long as you are productive and working, you are the ones that are bringing children. Did your language, did your discourse with your children change as a result of your opening up um, and of your work? Uh, do your children feel your powerful and influential role within society compared to before when you used to only be confined uh, to your uh, households? 
I hope that we will come back to Syria, but on the contrary, I do hope that if I come back to Syria, I remain in touch with Masma and Zaytuna. We are always in contact uh, with the girls. I have um, uh, reached a point uh, that is extraordinary, and it wouldn't be it wouldn't be fair uh, to um, take a step back. And the same goes for my children. My children, for example, have uh, purchased a computer, and um, Basma Al Zaytuna uh, taught us uh, how to use, uh, for example, computers, and this was part of the small grants program. And we have always been saying, I used uh, to tell them about how things function. Now, children have known how much I have developed. Even my computer skills have developed, and my children are astonished at this. Um, uh, sometimes uh, they even laugh at me, and uh, they are astonished, astonished at seeing uh, that um, I am capable as much as they are. What about you, Mirvat? What about your experience? It's the same. Um, I am preparing for the time I go back to Syria, where all my ch all my friends will be uh, staying with me, so that I can continue and maintain the project I have started. I have taken a step forward, and I do hope that this step will develop um, in order to help um, whoever is like me. Um, I can um, help them improve um, uh, their morals and um, to help them uh, gain strength and feel then she only wants to come here in order to support her. We are still working on this uh, aspect. Another question, maybe? Mervat is in Ghouta, I am in Rif Aleppo. However, um, we have to remain in contact, and we cannot imagine that once we are back home, we will lose contact. Cooperation is a must. Cooperation will... Uh, become something normal. You can no longer put an end to cooperation when it starts. We have started as an event, and we have the ladies who are working together, and they, they each have the, her own profession. We have tried to develop this group in order to have a comprehensive group um, where every woman will uh, share um, her skills and capacities so that this group uh, can better develop um, uh, within the region where we are working. And we try, of course, uh, to open up, and we try, of course, to take a first step that will develop. When I go back uh, to Syria, I am supposed to learn better things, uh, to develop, to work, uh, so that when I go back uh, home, I can better provide for the needs of my children. Basma and Zaytuna have given me a grant. And I have uh, gone, for example, to see uh, big shops, and uh, I am dreaming of developing my business into becoming a big shop, um, so that maybe I go, when I go to Syria, I would like uh, to engage in trade and business uh, on a larger scale. I am teaching uh, my, uh, ch my children, uh, but I can better provide for them. I wish uh, to develop, to develop my situation and to improve. Do we have another question? It seems like a lot of you have made a shift from the rural areas to the city in the context of the war, and you've also made a shift from living in an intact society to living in a society where the men are almost entirely absent or disempowered because they can't work. Uh, have you had any experience with the men being reintroduced into your community, and how has that gone? And uh, can you imagine living again a rural life after having spent so many years in, in, in a big city? So Rim is translating the question that the gentleman has asked. So you were living in um, a rural area and uh, now you are living in a society where men are disempowered and they have lost their capacities do you have any experience where men have regained or they have um, re-entered your community 
men that we had lost and that are um, coming back to us, if you have such an experience, would you like to share it with us? And how do you expect to better embrace um, living again in rural areas now that you have lived in urban cities? When we were in rural areas, it's not like we were in remote, uh, disconnected areas. In Syria, within the reef um, or within the rural area, the, um, the example would be, for example, the Bedouins. Um, in the, uh, for example, for the Bedouins, uh, mobile um, schools have been established. This is what we call the Kaltina, which is a mobile um, school that accompanies them. It's not like we are totally disconnected. Yes, but it's different than living uh, uh, in uh, downtown Beirut or in the heart of Beirut, says Reem. Yes, it is uh, a rural area. However, it's a rural area that is provided with education. So you do not expect uh, to uh, have any problem accommodating yourself um, when you go back, asks Green. Yes, of course, um, because I was living in a rural area um, uh, and I moved uh, to an urban area. I was uh, taking up and down the stairs, which is something that is weird to me. I was going uh, to the shops, um, but um, um, I have uh, gradually uh, been capable of adapting, uh, of going to school. And you feel that when you will go back to Rif Aleppo, you will be capable of easily adapting? Or if you will have the choice, uh, you would uh, go and live in urban areas because uh, you are used um, uh, to living in urban areas? It all depends. It depends on how you will feel, on where you will feel um, at peace uh, psychologically, if I may say so. Even if you are in the heart of the desert, you can still exercise your activity. Mirvat. No, here, uh, life for me is difficult because um, in Ghouta, it's a city. It's as if we are in Damascus. Here... I feel that it's different. It's as if I have moved from an urban area to a rural area. This is how I am encountering the situation. I cannot uh, accept that I am living in the camp as a camp because um, it's a very difficult uh, living condition. In Shatila, all in all, you have uh, shops, you have uh, souks. Um, however, it's, um, it um, is... Um, um, it, it accommodates uh, Syrians and the uh, Palestinians. Uh, you can work, you have your children at school. Regarding uh, accommodation and living in, in a society where men are disempowered or are no longer existent or um, are no longer existent in equal numbers. Yes, but here once again, it's about um, um, a woman's role, how to be capable of readapting or rehabilitating her husband and children so that uh, they could uh, go back to their uh, nature or even better. Th so it all depends on women's nature. When we came here, we were all um, depressed, um, uh, especially my husband, um, my, uh, my family and our family still in the Ghouta, where the situation is very difficult. However, I am still working on uh, developing uh, the capacities and on uh, helping uh, my husband and my children because my husband and my children come first. I want them to be even more powerful than I am in order for them to better adapt. Mira, the women that you work with and that you feel are empowered and working um, outside um, their uh, home, um, but at the same time, they are still um, shouldering the responsibility of their kids, of their homes. Uh, some of them have lost their husbands. How can they cope with this additional responsibility? How could they uh, take it with all the pressure? I do not want to uh, give you a gender-based answer, but women have the capacity to resist, and uh, I apologize for my answer, but this is how women, women have, are biologically capable uh, or have a better endurance. Uh, they can uh, join between uh, their role as mothers and their role as business persons, whereas studies have shown that men cannot do the same. They cannot be as present uh, in the household as they are outside. But I do not think that this is where the problem lies. I will just uh, think outside this framework to say that war, per se, gives strength to men, women, and children. And since women are involved in this war, they have gained strength. Uh, strength. She already said that she has gained strength um, for her children. It's the motherly uh, or the motherhood that, that provides her with better capacities. 
and uh, she goes outside um, the home, she works, and then she comes back, she uh, prepares the food. It's um, mental and it's psychological. It's very important for women to gain strength. You can even feel that uh, Syrian children have become more powerful. Today we can witness uh, some uh, circumstances that are very difficult. Um, and despite the bombing, you will see that the children are still playing. It's not like they have gained the strength from void. They have gained the strength uh, from the circumstances they are going through. If women are not powerful, the whole household will fall apart. To go back uh, to the question, and maybe you have an experience with this, um, are there any communities inside Syria that, uh, or uh, are, uh, do you know of any woman that has uh, lived for a period of time without men and then men came back to the community? Do you have any experience with such a community, with such a village, and how did this influence um, the overall ambiance or atmosphere within the household? The uh, shelter houses that are in Damascus were men free but when we have reconciliation or um, when uh, peace um, comes again once again men uh, come and we can see a, a male monopoly similar uh, to uh, the one that they had before so for, uh, the uh, he would for example prohibit her from uh, taking lessons um, at the empowerment centers because she is not supposed to uh, be acquainted with any men so a man is no longer at home and he is not in a place where he is very powerful if uh, they go back to where they used to be or if they go back um, uh, to uh, their own home the situation would have applied them but if uh, men go back or um, regain their strength women are capable of uh, facing them because they are not in their uh, uh, homes uh, they are in a weak point for men Many studies show that many men have uh, used violence as a result of uh, the, uh, uh, of the uh, sexual and um, as a result of the financial resources or strength. They have lost influence. They are no longer the masters of their homes. But at the same time, um, results have shown uh, during the interviews with many, many women within the camps or uh, shelters, um, he is no longer beating me um, as much as they used to beat me before because a man in this corner, he, um, he feels uh, fear because he knows that if he beats her, maybe the next day uh, she will know and because he doesn't have any money, if they tell him get out of here, he doesn't know where to go. So it's of course a very ugly pressure that is put on men. However, it's an opportunity for women to gain strength and uh, to tell a man that if you are beating me i will um, tell the psychological support committee that you are beating me and uh, today she has learned uh, to report him to a psychological support uh, commission maybe tomorrow she can learn uh, to report him uh, for um, a lawyer or uh, for uh, security forces so maybe we can work on this uh, equation if we are to look at things uh, from a humanitarian perspective it's very ugly to see that women are um, um, being um, pressured because they do not have money but um, uh, they, and they are being threatened but uh, I have no problem threatening them because maybe the next day we can press charges. You have mentioned violence. Among the things that we needed to repeat all the time or that we need to remind of and which we had mentioned um, in, uh, on the radio is violence. A violence is not concomitant with war. He's not violent because he is living at war. We have even discussed the matter from a legal perspective. Even those women who are not the victim of violence must know that uh, the Syrian law, the Syrian penal code punishes a man if he inflicts violence on his wife. And um, what could be the result of such a violence? This is one of the very important issues that we are attempting uh, to prove. You have uh, spoken about the law. To what extent is it important to interact with the changes in the law? Um, or is it that important to work uh, on women's empowerment? I think that they go hand in hand. You need to empower women and you need to have a socially empowered society. 
which means that you have um, people who are working and you have the law that is exerting pressure. The law, the law on rape, for example, Article 508 per se is very important in the Syrian Penal Code, which means that no matter how empowered women are and no matter how you could tell her that it's not your fault that he raped you, if the Syrian Penal Code uh, comes and uh, condemns everything that you are saying, um, so no matter how important it is to empower women, the law per se needs to be developed and improved and reformed. Do you have any other question? Yes. This is um, a very uh, good example of an empowered woman. I wish to comment on something that they said. She mentioned how he would beat her. As if uh, we are still in the medieval ages. This is not accepted. I agree with what she said because he doesn't have the right to, to beat her or to insult her. And she must stand for herself. Do you have a question? Yes. They said that uh, she couldn't, that she cannot do anything uh, by her own without people's support. But I think that at Basma Zaytuna, she can work with other women and that women can train women and empower women. So if I understood the, the idea, well, it's not important only to work with organizations, be they international or local. We can, as women, sit together without necessarily having a financial support from an international organization, without necessarily being confined to implementing a specific um, uh, plan of action. What do you think? Yes, I think that what you said is true. Were it not for Basma and Zaytuna, and um, this could be possible, it would be good to have women work because um, what she said um, makes a point. Uh, organizations are excellent, however, compared with the large number of women with whom we can work and which we can empower, there are there ain't enough um, organizations uh, and there ain't enough support. Um, you are an example for that matter. What I would like to say is that by the end of the day. There are people who take initiatives, who can take initiatives, who start networking with the neighbor, and this is her own initiative. So here you cannot separate the two. From our own experience and from my own experience, at one point um, we have been subjected to the embargo and uh, the army um, entered them by force in the region where I was living. In the same house, the whole family was actually confined at the same corner. Women would start uh, looking uh, for a uh, flower and um, uh, prepared um, the food. Another, for example, neighbor isolated herself. It's a matter of capacities. It's the capacity of a woman who takes the initiative. Some women take the initiative, others need the initiative. We believe ourselves to be empowered. But I cannot limit the capacities of another woman who um, is empowered. She exists, and if she weren't, if she hadn't existed, Syria wouldn't have um, uh, developed her capacities. Within Syria now, you can find women who are doing nothing, who are doing something out of nothing, who are working and who are supporting uh, her children using very limited resources. So here, I cannot say that uh, female activities are only the activities that are supported by international organizations. No, we have the local community and we have the local networking, which is very important. I wish to share with you an example. Where I am living um, uh, is a neighborhood that is being bombed continuously. I was the only one in the whole street that um, knew um, medical aid and emergency assistance. I tried as much as possible to uh, have uh, the uh, red crescent and we uh, initiated a course for a couple of weeks 
so that all women are capable of learning emergency and uh, aid support and that this knowledge would be transferred from every woman uh, to uh, and first aid uh, to, from every woman to uh, her uh, household those principles were um, understood it's as if we had uh, communicated the message and it's as if uh, we had uh, developed those skills the uh, most uh, simple example is to maintain life and if you want to start a small-scale project it um, could be successful however you will always need an initiative and if you don't have uh, someone who takes the initiative then you need the local community other questions describe your relation with the people working in Besma El Zaytune and the people you meet there. What is Besma El Zaytune for you? So what is your relationship with the persons you work with at Besma El Zaytune? Could you maybe um, develop more this uh, idea? I told uh, my colleague Awatif at Basma Zaytuna, I told her that if I say thank you, thank you is too little to say. I cannot find the words um, that can express my gratitude. And when we go to Basma and Zaytuna, we feel that we have people sympathizing with us. We were displaced and they were sympathizing with our cause. Basma and Zaytuna gave us a lot. and they have uh, given us uh, support um, and they have helped us enormously and I cannot but thank them and be very grateful thank you yes I apologize for the mic exchange I can imagine that now you have returned to Syria and there are some art group uh, that are available there are houses that are destroyed, there are new people in the region. How can I, in the project, repeat uh, the, uh, the uh, project? Will people actually accept my presence? They will simply ask themselves, how can they work? Uh, we have uh, men who are controlling, and they will ask themselves, who is this woman who is coming and who is opening up? Or is there anyone who is armed? And the person who has a rifle is the one who is controlling. He will say, she will pay me. How will she be capable of uh, paying me? She will have uh, to pay me for uh, providing access uh, to her business. If you have, for example, a, uh, if you have um, a business uh, for um, cloth, maybe you cannot open such a boutique. So I would like to know whether you have discussed this and since you are working, you know what's inside, what's happening inside Syria. What do these women need in terms of the local community? Or what kind of assistance do they need from the uh, local community? Here we have Basma and Zaytuna helping you. Basma and Zaytuna is only available in Lebanon. What will they be needing in Syria? Did you discuss the legal aspect? You cannot talk about the law in Syria or uh, jury in times of war. Basma and Zaytuna have uh, now offered me a lot. Why did we have a training seminar? Because if there is any competition, if there is uh, anyone who is actually competing with me, in this case, I will either have to sell at the cheapest uh, price or I have to compete which means that I need to develop my capacities I need to combat to develop my capacities in order to compete if we have uh, two adjacent shops um, I am uh, supposed uh, to uh, provide material that is better to discuss with them the rules of competition which means them so um, do you mean that if the difficulties that will be facing in Syria are different I imagine that when I go back to Syria, I hope that my skills would have developed for the best so that I can go to Syria, develop myself, develop my capacities, develop the capacities of my children. I have seven children. 
I think that what's uh, very important is that uh, she has faced difficulties in Lebanon. No matter what difficulties she has faced, uh, and no matter how uh, different they are from Syria, uh, since uh, she has learned uh, to become resilient, um, uh, she will be capable to come up with solutions. But the idea, the mental change or the psychological change is very important. It all depends on my capacity. If I leave everything here and I go. I would like to go to Syria and uh, to develop skills uh, to build um, and uh, to um, help them or encourage them build what is destroyed. Mervata, do you see that there has been any mental change in you? Yes, yes, of course. On more than one level, I have developed. Even my personality has developed. In the past, I never used to say no, whereas today I can say no bluntly and what is the main component or the main element that has led to this uh, mental change i think it's war and after war your experience during the past two years in lebanon what is the main component that has had you as mirva change psychologically i think it's the tragic situation that you are going through we have we're used to uh, live a different life in syria and this is what has um, encouraged us uh, to um, initiate or to develop among our children a different uh, perspective. Maybe when we go back to Syria, maybe if I go back to Syria, um, and if I go back now to Syria, it could be impossible for me to survive. I will go back to something that you said. Some people want um, uh, money, we have checkpoints. Of course, we cannot uh, put aside uh, the war traders or the war commissions. They will not only, um, they will not only uh, fight against her as a trader, they will fight against us who are simply eating bread. They are present in the slightest details. Let me share with you the very simplest example regarding the Dhamme Association. How can you have the local community protect you? I can imagine that if she goes back uh, to uh, the Reef of Aleppo, she will go back to her family. How can she uh, play on that um, uh, element? How can she have or win the support of the local community? Uh, maybe she will uh, be capable of gaining their support uh, to have them uh, understand that, uh, yes, if she brings uh, any cloth, it will be for their children. And uh, to have the other party understand that, yes, of course, if she can engage in business, it means that stability is, um, uh, is restored, which means that she can play on both sides. I think that if she wants to go back to Syria and to continue with the same project, her main uh, project would be to, uh, to be successful without uh, thinking about um, working with that party or with uh, that party or saying that I will use this party against that other or that. Um, this means uh, politicizing the matter. No, here I'm supposed to have simply a business-oriented mind. I, uh, I don't know if they agree with me, but this is the experience. This is what the experience says. We have to look at things from a different perspective. Once again, the local community is capable of protecting any um, activity, any venture, especially in Syria. It is known that we are divided in a way that uh, we cannot neglect or we cannot, um, um, we cannot overlook. It is well known that uh, this, um, um, this uh, city or this uh, village is controlled by that um, uh, family or by that other family. Now, we have understood something from Basma and Zaytuna. It's a starting point. Now, what we are developing on, I'm trying uh, to develop my skills uh, to have a project. I have started with a starting point. I have started um, a training girls in order to rehabilitate them uh, and to make them understand what I have acquired. And this, will, this means that I will not take a step back and I'm at the same time developing the skills of people who are assisting me especially those persons who uh, need to work and who have um, their own goals. I think that the most important thing is a psychological and intellectual change uh, which uh, will lead uh, to uh, better success. Yes, a second question maybe? I feel in these conversations like we act as if you came from the moon and not from uh, a few hundred miles away just a few years ago. Uh, and, and I'm curious if you can just tell us a little bit about the actual uh, power you have in your household over the decisions that we all make with our wives and husbands, like how to spend the money in your house, what your kids are going to do in school, 
uh, or the, the, the decisions about your family. Did you have any say over those decisions before you were uh, driven from your homes? Uh, today, has your authority over those decisions changed in any way? Sorry, is rephrasing the question. He wishes, uh, sh so he wishes to know how um, you used to be in the society or in your family before you came to Lebanon and now that you have come to Lebanon with regards to your influence and capacity with regards to the decisions that are made uh, within the family, which means um, um, how you spend money, children's education, outings, etc. What used to be your influence and what is your current influence? Did this relationship change? Ever since I was in charge of uh, children, because um, my husband um, leaves them from early in the morning. Um, and uh, regarding, of course, the financial uh, issues, I was the one who would uh, be taking care of the uh, family finance. But um, uh, however, excluding working outside the house. Um, you can develop your capacities, but the most important thing was not to work um, outside the home. Now that I have come to Lebanon, not only have I been in charge of the family, I have even felt responsible for my family, for his family, for the whole family. And now I have become more influential. And even my husband would tell me, you decide whatever you want. However, he is still very reluctant when it comes to, uh, working, um, to working outside the house. So he sees that I have the capacities. He wanted to develop um, my capacities uh, for me to work at home. Mashfa, what about you? What was the situation in Aleppo? We in Arif Aleppo, the kids would go um, to school. Uh, the, ba uh, the, uh, the, the dad would go to work. Yes, but what about the decision regarding what the children will, uh, what children will learn? Did you have authority or influence uh, to leaving the house? In the Reef, um, women are not supposed uh, to leave the house alone and women must not work. So I stick at home, uh, children would go uh, home. I have um, learned until the ninth grade and I would like, of course, my children to be more educated. My uh, girl uh, has um, a baccalaureate degree. I have wanted them to, uh, to learn um, uh, the husband would uh, my husband would of course uh, gain money but uh, it was impossible for her to leave it was impossible for my daughter to leave the house now that you are now that you are working and that you gain money you take control of your own money and you decide where to spend this money in aleppo when your husband was the only breadwinner did you have a say in how to spend the money yes of course it was a matter of dialogue i will say that this is uh, for um uh, for uh, for example the uh, house um, expenses uh, in the reef for example i didn't have any uh, rent to pay however i would pay for the expenses of my children now the situation has changed and i have come to lebanon I spent a couple of months here at home, but we evolved gradually thanks to the grant. And we have um, discussed that I will start working, I will go to the shop, um, uh, he will um, work um, uh, and I will work as well because when we came we were doomed. He accepted because we wanted of course to provide for our children, to provide them with education, with the cloth, uh, to pay for the rent. Because in Lebanon, we have more expenses than we had in the, uh, in the reef, in the rural area. Because, of course, uh, we were in a difficult situation. It is this uh, situation that had men, men uh, accept. And it is this situation that has given uh, room for some gains for women. And our main purpose is to develop such gains and to allow many women inside and outside Syria to have the opportunity for empowerment. Of course, we have many questions, but unfortunately, we are running out of time. So um, to conclude, maybe you can brief us on your expectations. How do you look at Syrian women for the next five years in Iraq? Expectations, prospects, or an advice? I wish to say one thing. When I engaged in this domain, 
when I left home, I used to ask myself, what are the rights of women? About what rights are they talking about? I was uh, short-sighted. Uh, the, the activities I have engaged in during the past three years have enabled me to understand that there are many difficult things that I didn't know, that there are many difficult things that I couldn't understand. I couldn't understand how a woman in any rural area couldn't leave the house, uh, but if accompanied by her husband. Today, I am convinced that this reality exists. However, um, this reality can change. This is how I see women in Syria. I can see women in Syria as they are capable of doing anything, though I uh, never um, understood this or saw this before. Now I'm convinced with this reality. And I am confident that all women in Syria will one day be capable of understanding this reality and of working towards uh, this situation. Mervat, I do hope that every woman will be capable of approving herself in everything that she knows and that she likes. We wish, um, of course, uh, to understand all those elements. It's a matter of dialogue. I know many Syrian women in Hasaka and al -Dir, who are carrying arms and who do not want anyone to invade their houses. They are women and they are taking a man's stand. In the house, women used to play a role in terms of controlling financial resources or deciding of the future of their children. But now that um, they are going under stress, uh, they are taking arms, they are training, they are developing in order to defend their countries. Rahaf, to conclude, I see that in the next uh, five years, women in Syria will play an enormous role because the men, uh, Syria will be depleted out, uh, will be depleted of men. Uh, regardless of the war prospects, uh, regardless um, of uh, the political approach of any political division of Syria, I see that uh, Syrian women will be similar to uh, German women who have taken Germany out of the war after World War II. And I think that Syrian women, women will be rebuilding Syria and will be empowering the new generation of children. I do hope that this will be the result of cooperation among uh, all of us. I would like to thank you for your um, uh, support. Uh, those of you who are following us on uh, the webcast, um, I would like to thank you. I would like to assist uh, all those who have uh, so, uh, supported me. Uh, and there's a project, uh, Eli Patrick Galois and um, uh, Zico. And we do hope that you will be following us in the next debate. Um, you can have a, um, our, you can follow us uh, on Facebook, Syrian Culture in Times of Conflict. Thank you very much and good evening. Shukran.